Oh, committee meeting. Okay, Vixen. Have fun with that. Those are always fun. Uh, that's at the end of class, answers. At the end of class. Uh, wrong, bad timing. Like, exactly the wrong time. Wow. I guess.
Oh uh, yeah, pincers? Yeah, they are pretty cool. Hey, LBW, how's it going? Good. <laughs> you really got the language down. You really got the local dialect. Perfect. Good. That's all you can really do. Alright, might as well start. Okay. Ah. Can I play this opening song on my uh, recorder? I don't think so. No. <laughs> okay, cyanide. Um, no, I, I, don't, I don't think I can. But let's start the stream music. Okay. Hopefully the pen is charged enough. I... By the way, does our Coomer surface work? I'm t I, I think the Coomer surface is dead for a while. One, 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 one. I waited for it to go to Mars and then come back. I don't think, I don't think it works. All right, whatever. Okay. So, um, excision, that's a word I saw like three weeks ago. Well, that's good for you. Only we're in a topology class. All right. Um, so yeah, that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, the overall thing I want to emphasize is um, we're not going to construct the chow ring. That's a miracle that we're going to appreciate. Now, who actually first put the chow ring of a smooth projective variety or quasi-projective um, on firm footing? Who actually constructed it after great the development of modern algebraic geometry and so on uh, it was Bill Fulton um, no not Schubert it's Fulton uh, the, the intersection the chow ring is actually um, the person who put it on solid mathematical uh, um, foundations is Bill Fulton and so um, that's who we can thank to, for that particular large piece of mathematics. We want to know how to use it. We want to learn what's true about it, how to use it, how to figure it out. 
um, learn, uh, understand it at a, on a sort of intuitive level. And so I'm going to show you some of the tools, most commonly used tools for figuring out a chow ring. Now, word of caution. If someone sticks a random projective variety, smooth projective variety in front of you and says, what's its chow ring? Understand one thing. You're screwed. Understand the second thing. Um, if that's not random, uh, AC, that's a very simple variety. Random variety is not simple, is inaccessible, essentially. Second thing, it's not even the, the zero, chow, chow zero, zero cycles, is going to be some beautiful, bizarre thing. Not finitely generated abelian group, it's going to be some crazy thing. Uh, uncountably generated, humongous thing you can study your whole life. Okay? So understand that about, hey, a homework problem, find the chow group of this, or the, the chow groups of this, or the chow ring of that. But we have some tools that can help us. Meyer via Taurus, it's used a little bit, yeah, sure. Excision, this one's used a lot, a lot more in my ex personal exper experience. And then that'll help us start the example of projective space, where we definitely know the chow ring of projectives. All right. Next tool is to relate chow rings and chow groups um, of two varieties with each other when there's a morphism between them. And that's the whole pushing and pulling um, yoga. Okay. We got to be a little bit careful here and make sure we have lots of examples to uh, check our um, biases at the door. Okay. In all of this, there's a, actually an interesting conversation to be had about uh, the degree, the concept of the degree of a zero cycle. Much like in topology, there was an augmentation map from H naught to Z. Similarly, there's like a degree map from uh, zero cycle chow to Z when you have a proper, uh, let's just say, a projective variety and not when you have some flabby open subset of a projective variety. Okay? So that's kind of projectivity is going to be uh, something you need to uh, start gaining intuition for. And, and I'm sure, I know many of you have seen. Uh, nice properties of why we like projective varieties rather than the full class of all varieties. But um, this zero cycles uh, discussion is something to pay attention to. And then finally, after that, we'll, we'll be able to finish the Chow, uh, finish the um, PN example. Okay? So, Meyer via Taurus and excision. Okay. How should we begin? We should begin with the following situation. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're following the book. We're following a book, Snake Jazz, 3264 and all that. Probably uh, the best set of notes that I can uh, recommend. No, not Fulton. No, no. No, I, don't, I actually don't recommend Fulton for learning intersection theory. I tried it as a grad student. I learned technical algebraic geometry tricks. If that's what you're looking for, then yes. But if you want to see what Schubert saw, it's not, you don't have to start with Fulton, obviously, because Schubert just, it's not physically possible. Okay, so um, Maya Vier Taurus and excision. 
let's think about this cartoon situation. You've got, we've got our ambient variety X, and we've got a closed sub variety. And I, well, let me try to keep Y. Y, a closed sub variety. of x or um slightly more generally a closed sub scheme the emphasis is on the possibility that y is a union of um uh, irreducibles just try it boca pier just try it. how can i answer that just try it like sit and put your eyeballs forward and then you'll know the answer by the end Okay, so y is a closed sub variety of x and um, or a union, okay, of sub varieties because we've technically been saying variety means irreducible. X is a variety for us right now. They're a closed sub variety and notice you automatically get an open subset from that, namely the complement. Let's think about this situation for now. Okay. So when you have this situation, um, uh, the first thing to observe is that um, there is a obvious map from the cycles on Y to the cycle group on X. Closed sub variety of Y is a closed sub variety of X and extend linearly. Okay, obvious. But here's another thing um, the rational equivalences also extend over. Also, you know, those sub varieties, those W varieties that uh, interpolate and give you the rational equivalences give you rational equivalences in X it's just an act of like remembering oh man sorry did I say I was thinking in, inside of Y I meant I was thinking inside of X and then you get this map okay and so therefore you get a map on Chow groups. You get this. All right, I'm going to call this um, I lower star, where I is the inclusion map. Okay, this is going to be called, this is just if there's too many arrows on the page, I'll, uh, and we need to give things names, it's called I lower star. And what does it do? It's the most naive thing. Take a sub variety of Y and view it as a sub variety of X. And the key point is that that preserves the equivalence relation. And so you get um, an induced map on Chow groups. Okay? So that's um, one thing you automatically get from this whole situation. Now, um, what else should I say about this for now? Um, nothing. I think this is pretty straightforward. So yeah, we get this. Um, I'm not saying anything about it, this map being injective or surjective or anything. You just get a map, a group homomorphism. All right, so that's easy. But what about, let's, what about you? What about you? How can we play with you? Hey, Twitch Let's Go is a chess streamer who interrupts class all the time.
Okay. Yeah, Pale Blue, but you're not a chess streamer. You don't have 3k followers, okay? So you're not gonna get a shout out. All right. Okay, next. So what about you? How can we relate chow groups of you and X? Okay? So here's how you, uh, you can relate them. If you have, observe this, observe this. If Z is a sub variety, of x, then you can take the intersection u. Notice this is a sub-variety of u. It is closed still by the uh, topology. It is irreducible because irreducible is checked on open sets by topology. Okay? And so that gives you a map on cycles. By extending linearly. Just by formal combinations. Okay. Now, this assignment respects rational equivalence as well. This one's a little bit, just a little bit less obvious. U is just an open set. In this case, you know, it's, it's just... I'm just taking it to be the complement of this closed set y. So I'm just thinking about two situations. Either I have a closed subset of x, do I get any kind of maps? Or I have an open subset of a variety, do I have any relationships there? I'm doing the open set version. And I'm just going to take it to be the complement. Why, why create a new u? Okay. So, um, you get this. Now, now, the point is this assignment respects rat because of the following. Suppose this is the reason drawn in a picture. Suppose you've got your rational equivalence situation. So you've got a W, a sub-variety of the product. Look here, W. Yeah, W, which is going to give you a rational equivalence between one fiber uh, counted with multiplicities, which you will learn how to do uh, at the end of this week, and another fiber counted with multiplicities. It's an interpolator subvariety. Hey, but it's an irreducible closed subset of this product. Well, guess what? We can then take this whole picture and restrict it to this open subset called u cross p1. So now u is some... Okay, I'm just gonna say it in words. Now take this picture, take picture, and intersect or just erase stuff, uh, intersect with um, u cross p1, this open set of the product. Then your W restricts to a um, closed subset of this U cross P1 still by the induced uh, topology stuff. It's irreducible. And it interpolates your uh... So respects rational equivalence. There you go. Okay, you get rational equivalent cycles before uh, um, intersecting with the open set. Rest after intersecting, will continue to be rationally equivalent cycles inside that open set. And so you descend. Get this map. 
you get an induced map. On Chow. Okay. Amazing. Very elegant. This map, I'm going to call J Upper Star. Just, maybe just for now. I don't know. Where J is the open inclusion. Okay. Now, something obvious I want to say about this map. The one right here. Not the last one, or the closed situation, but this one. Here's an obvious fact. The restriction map from all of X to an open subset, that map on Chow, is surjective. And you want to know the simple reason why? It's because even before you pass to rational equivalence, uh, it was surjective on the level of cycles. Um, nope. Yeah, here. This was surjective. And that's because there's something that you can do when you have a closed subset of you to get a closed if you have a cycle on you if you have a sub variety of you you can immediately upgrade it to a sub variety of x if you've got a sub variety inside of you then you can just immediately of dimension K. Closed sub variety. Of U now. Uh, take its closure. Closure in X is a dimension K sub variety. It's still irreducible. Because it, it's the closure of an irreducible. Is a dimension K irreducible? Sub variety X. And then you just uh, take that, that's your lift, if you'd like. You lifted like the basis elements. So that one's surjective. That one's for sure. Okay, great. So now, um, we can write the statement of Meyer via Taurus and excision, and then, um, at least we can state it. All right. So, uh, okay. So Meyer via Taurus and excision. Okay, let me let me let me set it up perfectly. All right, X is any scheme. One comment: When computing a Chow ring, no, Chow groups. Let's do Chow groups. When computing Chow groups of X, it's the same as computing the Chow groups of the reduced sub variety underlying x the scheme fuzziness on x doesn't see is not detected by the chow group okay thick radicals yeah that okay so because we're look we're always only we're talking about sub varieties of a thing and then the product thing set we're just looking at the sub varieties we're not taking sub varieties with some fancy scheme structure on them no so the subvarieties of a scheme are in bijection with the subvarieties of its reduction, and so we don't 
We don't care about that. So this this sounds really fancy, but it's not. Hey, you have any scheme? Um, and here's my Viatoris part. If you have two closed sub schemes. Then you have a right exact sequence. Okay, it, it's this. Chow of the intersection. Again, oh, is it scheme theoretic intersection? It doesn't matter because it's just take reduction. Uh, we're talking chow here. Chow that maps to the direct sum of the two chows. And then that maps to the chow of the whole thing. The union. And that's surjective. So I should I should have written this better. I ran out of room. Okay, you got this one. Now the maps are uh, obvious, meaning um, if you have something here. It goes to um, I1 lower star Z minus I2 lower star Z. Notice the intersection is a closed subset of X1. So you can view the inclusion map in X1, inclusion map in X2, and you get this is well defined, what I just wrote. Why we take reduced for intersection here? What if the intersection has multiplicity like this? Ah, yeah. <laughs> um, chow. So, um, this is not saying that x1, x2's cycle is independent. Uh, x1 intersect x2's cycle in the chow of x is independent of the scheme structure. That's not what this is saying. This is simply saying, look at x1 intersect x2 as a scheme. Take that thing's chow. I'm saying that that doesn't matter. The chow of that subscheme doesn't care whether it's a k epsilon mod epsilon squared or just spec k. Chow of, let me say it one more time. Chow of uh, spec k epsilon mod eps, uh, epsilon squared is the same as chow of spec k, which is the same as just the integers z times the fundamental class. Okay? The chow of the intersection subscheme is independent of. Okay, so that, that's good, good, good. Then um, this, the direct sum map is the. Again, inter uh, inclusion. Again, this is uh, this map is again induced by um, you add the two uh, inclusion maps. You add them. Okay. Uh, no, uh, I've never met them, Palindrome. Who's... are they nice? Okay, the, that's Maya Viatoris. Maya Viatoris is saying, uh, this is true. So, if, for example, how do you use it? If you want to know this, you can find generators of it by this. So you can build up the larger Chow union sub-variety. It's Chow two closed sets yeah it's chow you can build up from the smaller information and you can even say what the relations are the relations are given by these types differences of the same cycle on the two pieces that's what all the relationship the, the relations would be okay good so that's my Viatoris. We won't focus on that one so much. But B, excision. 
There's a, uh, the following sequence is also right exact. If y, uh, I'll do a y, I guess. Yeah, if y inside of x is closed, then um, following sequence is also right exact. Okay, which is um, chow of y, i lower star, chow of x, j upper star, chow of the complement. Okay, this is also right exact. So we already know it's surjective. So this part we already know. Meaning, this part we know. Okay? And so it's, it's really about the, uh, uh, so the, uh, the other part is the, um, that the relations are exactly what you find in Chao of Y. That's the part, that's um, the content for us in this one. That's the content. Okay. <laughs> but, um, luckily, there is a uh, simple sort of um, argument for, uh, um, for, for, for this uh, statement. So, so the, the, the slick, the book has a very slick um, commutative diagram method of proving this. Okay, so, so so the proof uses the following um, uh, sequence of observations. Okay, so so it says that you can define the Chow group, the so new definition of Chow group. As um, this sequence. Ready? There's a sequence like this. You take cycles on this product, and then you're going to construct some map, uh, which I'll tell you in a second, to cycles on X. Sounds rather mysterious how to do that. And then um, A of X is the, is the quotient. Okay? Now, you, what is this saying? So it has no content. You have to say what that first map is. The first map... is the following. Um, if you have an irreducible subvariety of P1 cross X, then there are two situations. Either it lies completely inside of a fiber over P1, in which case you send it to zero. Notice these are free, free Z modules with the basis, these irreducible subvarieties. So I can send them wherever I want in this world, independently. Okay, so I get to do this. So if you have an irreducible subvariety, send, uh, you send um, W, it's sent to zero if, um, if uh, W is contained in a fiber. Otherwise, if W is not contained in a fiber, You send W to the fiber of W, the class of the fiber, the cycle class, the formal linear combinations where you add the multiplicities times the irreducible components. Whatever, any two. In fact, any two will do. All right, um, where these are the um, formal combinations like multiplicities times components. Okay, and that's how you express um, that's how you express this uh, um, Chow group. 
it's this it's this quotient in terms of um a, 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 a homological algebra <laughs> okay so now the proof says you stare at this sequence uh proof will say there's a I, there's a snake of some sort there's some sort of snake lemma i, I guess um or do they even use the snake No, they don't. Okay, okay, okay. I don't think maybe they don't use the snake. Okay, let's let's do this. So here's here's how you do it. Uh, you write down this uh, massive sequence. Two sequences. U is the complement. Um, there you go. And these are these, um, okay. Uh, this map, they call this the boundary map D sub X. That's what they call this. Like difference of two fibers. I guess that they're going to give these names. Okay, and then you know that Okay, these are vertical the vertical ones are the ones we just discussed Okay Okay, so there's this commutative diagram of um, of, of objects and this map is the, uh, dude, these are the I lower star, J, so on. And we know this is surjective. Okay. And so now, uh, the claim that, um, the kernel of this map, apparently the claim that the kernel of this equals the image of this apparently follows from this diagram but maybe 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 it's obvious let's see if something's in the kernel of this i didn't actually check this let's see if something's in the kernel of this um yeah why is this not uh obvious if something's in the kernel of this then you lift it um oh it's a diagram chase the diagram chase yeah if something's in the kernel of this if alpha is in the kernel of this you lift it to here and then um you look here what are we trying to do we're trying to find an element in zy you look he okay you look at alpha prime in here you look here and then what and then um, we know that that thing goes to zero here so then you find an element up there is that is that how you do it Whatever. Okay, so diagram chase. <laughs> so diagram chase. Um, okay. A diagram chase shows that the map this is surjective. Wait, but that one we already knew. And the bottom row of the diagram above is right exact. So it's just saying that a diagram chase works. 
Wait, 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 wait. Wait, hold on. If if you have alpha in here, and it goes to zero. So you pick an alpha prime. That went to alpha. Wait, does this actually work? Take an alpha prime that maps to it. Let's call this U. U is U is in the kernel of this map. So there exists a U prime that maps to U. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, I think this is getting somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Megalomorph. This <laughs> taking me back too. <laughs> okay, there exists a U prime that maps to it. But that's surjective over there. And so there's some uh, X maps to here. Okay. Then. Then you look, oh, okay. Then you look at X's image down here, and I guess you subtract them or something. Is that reasonable? I think you should subtract these two. If you take this and this and subtract them, You'll get something that is in the kernel of this map. So if you take this and this and subtract them, you'll get something that's in the kernel of this map. I think I'm doing this right. And then that, therefore the difference here is in here somewhere. And then uh, port it down here, and then it'll map back to alpha. So actually subtract this minus this. Okay, that's good. I did the diagram chase, in my mind at least. Okay, good. Yeah, fantastic. What a wonderful uh, proof. <laughs> All right, so that's excision. What does it say in words? It says that the relations that that the chow of the open is generated by ambient chow restrictions. And what are the relations among those generators? The new relations. The new relations are obtained by just pushing forward, the declaring that stuff from Y is all zero. So the chow of this is the chow of X plus declaring that all the stuff in Y is zero. Great. And now we can actually get some information about the chow of projective space. We can actually build it. Okay. So here we go. Um, yeah, you gotta, you, yeah, check. Megalomorph is really smart. Go check out, yeah, Deluria. If you're, if you're, um, if that's like what you go, if, you're, if that's what you're into, check out Megalomorph. Here's a shout out. Okay, Chow of Projective Space. Use excision. Plus the only Chow ring that we know. Oh, 
one comment, important comment. In this excision, uh, in this excision statement, J upper star, if X is smooth, then this is a ring homomorphism. Not true about the push forward map. Push forward map will not be a ring homomorphism. No, bad. Okay, so, um, but, but the pullback, the upper star, will be ring homomorphisms for us. Chowing down on groups, that would have been much better. Okay, ready? Use excision and only chow, uh, the, and only chow groups rings that we know, to build up some info about the chow uh, groups of projective space. Ready? Look, because projective space is... Uh, a hyperplane plus an affine space. This is a Y and this is a U. Okay? And so if you want to know the chow of projective space, well, look, look what you can do. You have excision, and now here's the point. Um, focus on uh, your favorite graded piece. Go by dimension, yeah? So look at um, dimension, uh, we already know. Top dimension, there's just the fundamental class times z. That's not the interesting part. Look at the dimension right below the top, which is n minus one. So look, you get, um, for example, a n minus one of pn. This is just z, with fundamental class pn minus 1. Okay. Hey, but hold on. a sub n minus 1 of a n is 0. And this is an exact sequence on the um, middle part too. And what we conclude therefore is that the chow, the n minus first chow group of projective space is generated by um, the class of a hyperplane. Any two hyperplanes are rationally equivalent. Just take a pencil that interpolates between them. Okay? So, um, that's great, but we're missing a detail. It's generated by a class of a hyperplane, but can it be that a hyperplane happens to be torsion, n-torsion? I mean, it's cyclic group, but how do we know it's free or whatever good question this you have a way of thinking about it now go ahead and uh figure out an argument for that if you if, if you want to if you want a temporary exercise okay all right um <laughs> so next uh, what about the next chow group okay but for the next one for the next one you can uh you can use and you can go inductively. Just go inductively, because pretend you knew the Chow groups of P n minus 1 completely, and that they happen to be generated by hyperplane in there, and then a hyperplane in the hyperplane, and then a hyperplane in the hyperplane. 
etc. Yeah? You go inductively and you conclude the following. Generated by the class of any k-dimensional linear space. We'll just say k-plane for this, okay? K-plane. Got it? So what we just concluded with excision is we got a sort of surjective hands on uh, the Chow groups and the Chow ring, therefore, um, because we actually know how to multiply uh, k-dimensional a the class of we know how to multiply the classes of two linear spaces. Why? You can move one linear space to be general position using a family, one parameter family of matrices or whatever to be in linear pos general position with respect to the other linear space. And so you just get like, um, yeah, you get the intersection product from there. Okay? So the only detail that's missing is are, are these things freely generated by the class of a k-plane? K Small detail. Okay, let me go. Why don't we go? Wh why don't we go all the way down to the smallest? Okay, and that is what if you just take a zero plane meaning a point? Here's a puzzle Why is it not the case that a point The class of a point is um why is it not n torsion? Why is it not torsion? For some, you know, added a bunch of times, it becomes zero. Yeah, so just a small, small detail. Why is that not the case? Like, what about just the class of a point? More generally, what about the class of a point in any variety? Can we say something definitive, some non-zeroness statement with certitude, with certainty, non-zeroness of some, something, something as innocent as the class of a point? Okay. Okay, <laughs> so um, this is this is actually not obvious. You know, it's not obvious that a point should be non-torsion. Um, the class of a point should be non-torsion in an arbitrary variety. In fact, it's false for an arbitrary variety, but for for projective varieties, you're never going to get a point having torsion. So for, for X projective, in fact, um, it's ne the class of a point will never be a torsion uh, element. And really, I have to be careful. The class of a point P will never be torsion. Uh, for any point on the variety X. It's not the case that any two points on a projective variety are rationally equivalent. That's not the case. First example is an elliptic curve. Uh, 
Exactly. When x was was the affine line, the class of a point, for example, is zero. So it's you know, class of a point is not some trivial thing. Um, there, to know certain with certainty that the class of a point is non is not torsion requires you to understand the importance of the projectivity hypothesis on varieties. In fact, there's a more general one where you, where you talk about proper varieties over uh, our, our base field K. Okay, so properness and projectivity enter right when you ask, hey, what can you say about point classes on, um, on, on, a, on a given variety? Okay, and, and where this actually takes us is the discussion of push forward and pull back. So this actually takes us to the push forward and pull back discussion. So where are we? So um, we kind of started this discussion. Zero cycles. So points with multiplicities added together. I started with just a single point. What do you know about the class of a point? Okay, we're about to see that for a projective variety, the class of a point will not be torsion. And that will help finish the details on projective spaces chow ring. Because we have generators, we don't know exactly what the graded relations are. Um, all right, so uh, the content of that will be kind of um, swept under the rug right here in the discussion of push forward and pull back specifically push forward. I guess I'm going to start that discussion here in a sec and uh, we'll continue with it on Wednesday. So this is two, but um, we already like have said enough to um, finish three right after this. So it's, it's okay. So push forward, proper push forward. And um, sometimes Pull back. We start with push forward because it's uh, fewer requirements to understand it. Okay? Proper push forward. What's the setup here now? The setting now is going to be you have two algebraic varieties and a map between them. Uh, which way do they want their y's and x's? y to x. Good. So we have this situation. Map between two varieties. Regular. Two schemes. Okay? If you have a sub-variety of y and you just take its image, that's the natural that's a natural thing to do. Take its image. It's not going to be a sub-variety necessarily. So um, there's actually a very nice class of uh, maps where that's true. More than that's true. And um, so it motivates, perhaps we should restrict to um, proper maps between varieties. If F is proper, proper means universally closed. All right. So universally, uh, we already have all the finite type um, hypotheses. What, universally closed is some schemey uh, general scheme nonsense uh, definition. It's very important, of course. But um, for us, if y and x are both projective varieties, that's immediately a proper map. Okay, so that's the, that's the setting that it's used the most. Okay, so if f is a proper map, then um, a sub-variety of y has image another sub-variety. And good news. Um, f of z is a sub sub variety. If if z is a sub variety of x of y, then just a set, the set f of z is a sub variety. So meaning closed, and of course irreducible, because it's the image of an irreducible. And so you can attempt to produce a push forward map on Chow groups. 
just like you tried to do in topology class when discussing homology. Homology, push forward and homology, they're together. Pullback and cohomology are together. Okay, in one's mind. All right, so you can now attempt a definition of push forward. It's the naive, um, simple-minded thing. Okay, so let's 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 attempt it together. How do you do something like this? First, tell me what you do on the level. First, try to tell me what to do on the level of cycles. You know, without rational equivalence headache yet. So, on level of cycles, if you have a sub variety of y. The irreducible closed in Y. You send it to the class of the image. Okay. That's a naive good guess. There are some um, things that you might not have thought about. And a very good example to keep in mind in both pull push forward and pullback situation is the blow up of project of p2 at a point no not for a proper map megalomorph for a proper map uh closed universally closed so not only is it it's, it's closed so it sends closed yeah yeah, yeah. so we're, we're gonna do that if f is proper just for now it's just so that we can make sense of that but you'll see that if you try to make the 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 thing that we're about to do right now, if you try to make it work for the simplest examples, you'll get nonsense results. So that will then further reverse justify the properness uh, assumption. Okay, but just naively, it's like, yo, why? If I have a sub variety on y and I want to make something out of sub varieties on x, it would be nice if I could just take the image and and circle that. Okay, so so here's the thing: you, you naively do this on the level of cycles. Yeah, cycle. I'm not going to put brackets because I don't want to. Um, um, I don't want to introduce rational equivalence yet in my uh, definition. So cycles, you just send irreducible thing to its image. Hey, root guy. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Thanks for subscribing. You, I know you're one of my aunties, so thank you so much. Um, uh, thanks for supporting, uh, root guy auntie. Okay, so you do this. Uh, now here's some here's some things that you might not have thought about. Um, now, I'm saying that we're gonna get uh, k-dimensional things should map to a k-dimensional thing, right? What can happen to the dimension under regular maps? It can go down. So what happens if z if f of z is smaller dimensional? Okay, so now uh, we start to start we start to make um, changes to this thing. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change change it uh, according to two situations. What if f of z okay? The answer to this is um, you send this to zero. Okay, you output zero. Don't output the class of f of z in a different lower chow group. Don't do that. Just send zero. This is good. That, okay, that now we fixed the problem of taking kth graded piece to kth graded piece. Good, just send it to zero. Good, we got rid of that. Uh, and now there's a second thing that you might not have thought about, and it's more subtle. Okay, um, there's one more situation that needs to be taken account of. And you can think of this as accounting for multiplicities, in a sense. What if z maps multiple to 1 onto f of z, but finite, generically finite at least? So that's, what if 
I'm going to try to draw a picture. Classic finite map picture. This is Z, and it maps um, multiple to one onto F of Z. At least generically. There might be some parts of it that get like a little blow up type picture that gets some parts of it get co contracted and so on. Some there have to be closed subsets that get contracted by upper semi-continuity of dimension. But um, most of it on an open subset, it's finite. It's a quasi finite map. Okay, see you non dairy neutrino. Have a good one. Everyone, did you know NC streams? Okay, I did it. Next. So if it's multiple to one, what you do is you don't output just f of z, you output the multiple to oneness times f of z. This is like three to one picture. You output not f of z, but three times f of z. Okay, so this is a small, um, this is a little bit of a chain, uh, uh, a little bit of a subtle um, point that we have to kind of uh, a modification to the naive assignment. Just take image cycle. No, no, no. Take image with this multiplicity, the multiplicity of how many times you're covering that image variety, at least generically, you attach that multiplicity to the image um uh, cycle. Does this make sense as an assignment? And then that assignment, so here's the main theorem. So these are the two what ifs. Okay? Uh, either it squashes it, in which case output zero, or it doesn't squash it. And then you output the multiplicity of the covering times the output. So this assignment. on um, cycles, extended, uh, you know, linearly on combinations of pure cycles. This assignment on cycles um, preserves rational equivalence. And so if you want to see a proof of this, it's in Fulton, the the, the encyclopedia, um, the, the 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 user's manual, um, and uh, I remember the proof this, this part uh, because I read it as a grad student, and it's a very nice use of something from a number theory class you might have seen. The very nice use of the norm map uh, when you have a field extension. Um, so that's kind of. That's the norm, existence of the norm map explains the uh, surviving rational equivalence thing. When you have a, a field, a finite field extension, you, you get a norm map from, um, uh, basically from uh, the non-zero elements of the upstairs field to the non-zero elements of the downstairs. Um, it's just, you, you multiply an element by all of its um, Galois conjugates, or you kind of, uh, you extract the constant term of its minimal polynomial, or um, you consider the determinant of multiplication by that element. This is a couple different um, ways of doing it, but, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's like a field theory uh, construction from, that originated, definitely originated in uh, number theory, algebraic number theory, but it finds a geometric manifestation here um, in the statement that this thing uh, preserves rational equivalence. So you'll, fi you'll find that in Fulton if you want to see it. Okay, and, and so we get a push forward map on the level of Chow. called proper push forward.
Okay? And it's just for all K. I mean, it's on the whole chap. This is a group homomorphism. Not a ring homomorphism. Okay? Compare with algebraic topology class, where homology theories were all group theoretic stuff. And then they told you at the very last week, usually. Last week, maybe the last couple days. Hey, you know, there's a cohomology. And the, all the arrows were reversed and everything was dual. And uh, the reason we like it better is that it's got a ring structure on it. And there's a pullback map on uh, cohomology. And that's a ring homomorphism. Isn't that great? And then you use it all yeah, a bunch. Yeah? The same uh, theme happens here. I know I'm, I know I'm uh, over time. So I'm just going to um, tell you one example to think about to confirm that properness is very, very important. Properness is very important. Okay. So think about this example. Think about the example of um, A1 included inside of P1. Okay? And in P1, you can assume that the class of a point is non-trivial. That you can actually prove by just Shafarevich, just definition of what's a closed subvariety of P1 cross P1, etc. Yeah? Think about this inclusion map. Um, why shouldn't for this map? Like, why? This will just confirm for you that it was very good that we had properness assumed in the map. This is not a proper map. I'll let you find a closed subset that uh, doesn't have image a closed subset. Okay? So you're going to get uh, a real problem here. And you, by collecting these examples, it's the easiest way of remembering that there were assumptions needed just to, just to do the most simple-minded assignment of... You have a variety up here, output the output variety times the number of times we visited it. If you're really clever, you can come up with that. Uh, uh, you can foresee that uh, requirement. Yeah, well, properness is going to be needed. Okay, so think about this example. Think about others. Make up your own examples where uh, each hypothesis, you kind of um, uh, mess with it. I, I do want to put one other example in front of your face, which is the blow-up of a point, which uh, Peter... Ronheimer taught me to draw like this when I was a graduate student. So I'll go ahead and continue that tradition to the blow up of P2 at point. Okay, think about that map. This is These are two projective varieties. So uh, regular map between, that's proper. Um, so proper push forward works. It is, is, is actually a thing here. Um, but uh, think about, you know, um, try to visualize what's happening to under the push forward map for some your favorite uh, sub variety of the blow up. Um, maybe the exceptional divisor. Uh, and test your understanding of the definition definitions. And more importantly, next time we'll have we'll discuss pullback. Pullback is way more subtle. Um, and requires uh, some uh, maturity. Okay, so this map will be especially a good example for the headaches of defining pullback of, uh, uh, at the level of Chow. Okay, and after discussing those things, we'll go back to the projective space case and just uh, finish exactly what the Chow ring of projective space is. It's indeed the case that it's freely generated by the classes of linear spaces and the Chow ring structure is the obvious multiplication structure. Pullback, what does that mean? 
Well, you might want to say, you might be tempted to say take pre-image sub-variety instead of take image, right? You want to go backwards. Take pre-image sub-variety. That's still a closed, pre-image of a closed set is closed. So you get a closed subset. You could take the scheme theoretic uh, multiplicities of the pre-image and assign that cycle. However, why is that going to have the right dimension or co-dimension? Yeah, these are subtle points that have to be addressed in order to make that dream of pullback operation actually uh, survive rational equivalence. And so we uh, will have to discuss that more on Wednesday. Okay, so let's let's uh, draw up the. Uh, I'll wait for questions if if anyone has any. Um, but in the meantime. Uh, we can get the credits rolling. Okay. Who was here? Who was here? Okay, let's look. Um, Vixen is here. I'm just gonna scroll backwards through chat. Vixen's here. Yeah. Oh, it works! Did- did- It- it changed! Twitch Let's Go is here. Wow. Which Let's Go is here? Why Luo is here? Welcome back. All the students or members. Australians. LBW, the leader of the Australians. The head kangaroo, you know, the main, the main koala. Uh, root guy, now root guy pays money. Root guy, cash money. Wow, and for that, you go straight up, all American capitalism. There's your access. That's what you paid for. Access. I made your name a little bit smaller, but... Uh... Pandemic. Welcome back. <laughs> okay, Megalomorph. Not gonna repeat that comment. Okay, AC. AC. Moderator. Well, man, this chat. Non dairy neutrino was here. NC. Did you guys know that N? He's not here, so I'm not even into it. NC. Very good. Um. No, don't, don't, let's go, don't, just don't, it's, I uh, just, just prefer not. Okay, so now, who, who else is here? Ebok. Ebok. Hello. Hello, Ebok. Ah, uh, there, you're a new person. Did you follow? No, you didn't. You didn't follow. You, you didn't follow. Okay, next. Yo, Root Guy Auntie! Thank you for giving a sub to Twitch Let's Go, the celebrity. Amazing. Hey, Twitch Let's Go. Uh, speaking of chess. Oh, Tensors is here, Tensors. Here, here, tensor came for the tensor. Here you go. Okay, so Twitch, let's go. Did you know? Did you know that 
Hikaru who was a sub here. True. It's true. He he might he might not have no yeah, you know the trick? You know the trick? Okay. Well, you're like all celebrity so you know these tricks, but yeah. I think it was Root Guy actually. <laughs> Root Guy Auntie. Clearly an auntie who's supporting me. She uh gifted the sub. Yeah. That was incredible. Okay. Monty Morris. Let's see. Monty Morris. Let's see. Did Monty Morris follow? You did. You followed. Okay, I'll, I'll make your name a little bit bigger then. Great. Welcome. Really, I really like you. I, I, I like you now as a person. You're a good person now. Yo, yeah, BPS is here. Okay. Your friend streamer does somewhat uh, somewhat accurate. Does 12 plus hours C++ streams? Dang. Dang, that's crazy. Good. You want me to shout him out here? Is that, is that what that was for? Here we go. I'll do that. Um, somewhat accurate. Ah, uh, this person does long streams, folks. And they're friends with Monty Morris. Crazy. Okay. Um, who else? Did I miss anyone? Um, like a log. You don't need dopamine. Uh, S Silurial. There's a new person. Silurial. Wow, welcome. That's really cool. Snake Jazz. Who else? Uh, AC, re <laughs> AC requested recorder. Um, Chambra. Stargate. One. Wow. King. Welcome, everyone. All right. AC. I got AC. I got AC. No, AC. No, I got AC right here. AC. The bomb. Oh, Hikaru. I forgot Hikaru. That's right. <laughs> Hikaru. I forgot Hikaru. Yeah. Hangs, mate. Did I get you? I usually get hangs, mate. Welcome, welcome. Right at the end. Did I get smash time? Was smash time here? I think smash time was here. Okay. Hope everyone's having a good Monday. Uh... Now, um, that's right, Hikaru's a sub. Is that the sub badge? Yeah. I, is it, you could probably just, can't you mod Hikaru too? If, if we really wanted to, we could make him a mod. <laughs> you can VIP Hikaru. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be, uh, I mean, it's, it's true. It's a very important person. Okay. Anyway, anyway, this is getting, this is, this is, this is, this is getting boring. Hey, Smash Time is here? Where's Smash Time? He showed up? No, he didn't show up. Okay, so um, let's find out where we're going to dump all this 
this this this human um these human beings where should we dump them how do you actually do raids i click the raid channel button and i get four five options and none of them are appropriate let's just put it that way how do i go further down this list oh whatever But I don't know who to raid. I have to like browse it, you know? So like, like it. Example. Oh my God. Oh my God, everyone. Yeah, we'll, we'll raid Twitch. Let's go in a second here, everyone. But look who showed up. Look who showed up. Physics. Let me get the grammar right. The spelling. Hmm. Physics streamer. All kinds of physics. Friend of the stream. And uh, I don't understand a thing they say. So. That's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just, let me, let me try this. Let me try this. Wait, that's not working. Oh, wrong backslash. Fade. And then I put the brackets. Do I put brackets? There you go. That worked. Nice. Nice. Oh, it got rid of those fools. 